Chris Gowser here with Matt Howell and featuring super special guest. That's me. <laughs> I'm on a radio thing. <laughs> this was a horrible mistake. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I don't do character stuff again, honest. That's okay. I'm, I'm Who are you? Wait, no, let's not do any introductions yet. It's going to be a big surprise. Okay. Ooh. This week on the first run, Matt and I, along with super special duper secret guest, me, are going to discuss the end of the trilogy. Mm. The end of a nine film arc with two other sub films included. Right. The whole Star Wars thing, the Skywalker story, comes to an end with Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. We're also going to discuss Marriage Story. Mm -hmm. It's just Marriage Story, not a Marriage Story. Right. No indefinite article. Right. Marriage yeah, Story. Nope. Noah Baumbach's film, which is currently streaming on Netflix. And then, the, you know what, really? I'm burying the lead, Matt. This is Adam Driver Fest. This is Driver Fest 2019. It is. Because it's Rise of Skywalker. We got Marriage Story. And then finally, currently available on Amazon Prime, is The Report. So it's just wall to wall driver fest, and I'll introduce you in a moment, guest. Uh, so Thank it's going to be a big show. We'll tell you what's coming up on your home video releases, and finally, the show wraps up with what we think are the, our five favorite minor players in the Star Wars universe. So go ahead, introduce yourself. I think now's the time. Uh, well, hello there. I am uh, Kevin O'Toole, co-host of uh, Culture Dogs on WWUH Radio from the University of Hartford in Hartford. Well, West Hartford, Connecticut, really. It's at 91.3 FM on your FM dial. Also, on this thing called the Internet, kids are loving it, www.uh.org. They can't stop talking about it on their phone things. They plug into their ears. It's wonderful. See, I was about to say now, folks, that's a professional. It is. Not like the two of us. No, not at all. He even gets the call ahead. letters. We've got to come up with call letters. That's what we're, we've been missing on the show. That's call letters. Hmm. Well, you do TFR. That's yeah. true. WTFR? Done. Magic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's, <laughs> KTFR. We, are we west of the Mississippi? <laughs> we could be. <laughs> well, let's, uh, let's get to... All right. I think sometimes it's best just to rip off the Band-Aid. Okay. Let's hear a little bit from Rise of Skywalker. At last. Okay, I don't know where we want to begin here. I think it's fair mm -hmm. that we have Matt start because I think out of the th well, I'm speaking now for you, Kevin. But I know in in this first run expanded universe that Matt is the larger Star Wars fan. In this first run marriage, let's call it what it is. Chris. Sure, fine, yeah. great. Have you, have you read the books? Is that uh, the no, I'm not that much of a super fan. I have read a lot of the comic books though. No, none of the none of the novels. For that's the most a part. that's a good chunk. Though. Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it's a yeah, lot. Yeah. yeah. So let's start off, Matt. Why don't you tell the fine folks working on their brand new Pelotons that they got for Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> My what? husband got me mine. <laughs> <laughs> what is what, what is Rise of Skywalker all about? And then tell us your thoughts about it. And I want to state, folks, too, we're not going to do a special spoiler show. We're going all in here. We right. feel it's the best thing to do. Mm -hmm. Is right. just to d dig deep into this. So you are warned. If you have not seen it yet, just skip ahead to Marriage Story or your home video picks. Uh, timings are in the show notes. All right, Matt, go ahead. What's this all about, and has this f been a fine-fitting wrap-up to your beloved series? Okay, so what is this thing about? Shocker, you know, based on the other ones, the Resistance is still fighting the First Order. Training is happening. Forces are being raised. You know, basically all the mystery box stuff is still out there. We're all waiting for it to, to drop and see what happens. It seems like a weird film to try and, you know, I guess summarize because it's it's essentially like all the other ones as far as the skeletal plot goes for the most part. It's not that different. Okay. But, okay. So, I feel like we Do need to... Do you feel betrayed here, Chris? I know what's going on. <laughs> I know. I expect maybe a little bit more, but sure. <laughs> Especially if we're going to get into spoilers on this one. Okay, so well, we could. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, Go ahead, Kevin, please. Um, 
I I believe Matt's uh, Matt's entirely right structurally that J.J. Abrams is, <laughs> you know, uh, he he, you know, he respects the fact that uh, aside from respect is an interesting word. Uh, yeah, go ahead, continue. Well, I think it's correct. <laughs> uh, but uh, he respects the the structure of uh, some of the best of the Star Wars series, and it's usually involved. There's a planet planet killing weapon mm-hmm. that's got to be destroyed. And it's the uh, originally Rebels versus Empire. Now it's become uh, uh, the Resistance versus the First Order. And as of this uh, movie, uh, within about 15 to 20 minutes, is now developed into the Final Order, Mm -hmm. sounding much more ominous. Mm. And uh, there is indeed a Death Star does appear in this movie. Yes, it does. Oh, yeah. Not not in whole. Not in whole. In pieces. Yes, in pieces. Yes. 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 There is a planet that gets destroyed. That uh, does happen. Definitely, definitely, yes. there is that going on too. And there are other other uh, neat little details. And yes, a uh, uh, big spoiler right here. I don't think it's that big a spoiler because some trailer. people talked about. It. Yeah, it's basically <laughs> in the trailer. If you were listening, like Matt was, I was. Uh, mm. The Emperor Palpatine is back. Right. And he's uh, he's in conference there with uh, good old uh, Ben Skywalker himself, Kylo Ren, who's not so good old certainly as the movie begins Ben Solo Ben Solo yeah. I'm sorry he's Ben Solo well he's got that blood in him don't he yeah he does anyway he does have some Skywalker and that's a fair point um and so what what's happening is yes there's a planet kill, killing weapon but there's also the emperor looks it looks like he's he and his Sith are going to take over again and and tamp out anybody who stamp out anybody who who doesn't agree with being really cool Sith people <laughs> <laughs> Or, you know, obedience to the people, whatever, you know, the bad, the bad people. That's right. Um, and so uh, our heroes have to basically struggle struggle against that. And uh, there you go. And uh, as it turns out, as the movie begins, uh, Ray, uh, uh, played by Dizzy Ridley, is uh, picking up on her training from where she left off, now training with Leia. Uh, Scott, Leia, Who just Arcana. happens to, is a Jedi, apparently. Apparently. Well, see, yeah, somebody raised yeah. that issue with me, too. Well, you don't think she would have trained at all see, in the I, intervening years, especially see, now that she's a general? See, I'm going to say I'm gonna say that some training was probably had, yes, almost certainly, to the extent that it kind of it kind of plays like they, they just kind of pulled it out of left field a little bit. Uh, but then again, a lot of the stuff that had to happen with regards to Carrie Fisher's Character, especially as this movie is concerned, had Dude to be run. pulled out of like thin air because you're on timely passing. Yeah. Yes. Right. In fact, it, and I don't know. It was weird looking at her on screen there, feeling that a lot of it could have been digital Carrie Fisher. Unlike say the Irishman, there's not like a situation where you know she has to get involved in some major stunt where it's <laughs> going to be plainly obvious this is not uh, right. living Carrie Fisher. It still seemed like maybe there was some recycled old lines to some extent. Well, they said they had stuff left over from The Last Jedi and yeah. uh, Force Awakens, right, that they were able to reuse. This mm-hmm. is what they have said. I personally, I didn't find that nearly as distracting in this movie, just from the standpoint that there's so much other stuff going on. Like the movie begins with with a sequence where that where um, and now I'm for, now I'm forgetting the name of Oscar Isaac's character. Poe. Poe. Right. Uh, Poe Cameron. And Poe Dameron. Poe Cameron? <laughs> James's brother. Poe Dameron and uh, Finn and Chewie are uh, are on the run with BB-8 there. They're on the run in the Millennium Falcon from, uh, wasn't, wasn't that what was happening? They were eventually on the run from the First Order types. Yeah, I'm sorry. They were, they yeah, were hunting down, they yeah, were hunting see, down and something. That's, and, and like what we're, it's like, it's, yeah, there's like a, a, a there's a, a mole. There's like a defector. They're yes, feeding them a spy, yes, yes, um, yes. feeding them stuff. Uh, um, yeah. There's Emperor Palpatine's back. Uh, Snoke was a clone. Let's just throw it all out there. Yeah, yeah. Snoke was a clone, and apparently, uh, any big baddie Sith-related person basically seems to have been connected to Palpatine. Is basically how they kind of laid it out. Mm-hmm. So, like direct, like directly, like an aspect of Palpatine. Right. So let's get. So, but, they, but they were running, and this this did this did lead me to. The uh, I thought it was very neat that bit where they were doing the, uh, the doing the light speed jumps and what what did they had a name for it something hopping uh, yeah uh, light speed skipping light speed skipping mm-hmm. that was it uh, where suddenly they suddenly they turn on the uh, they turn on the the light speed and suddenly they're not there they're in the middle of a city or they're in the middle of an asteroid field yeah. and they're dodging as they're going and all, all right. this and they're t- and they keep on reminding Poe Dameron how bad an idea this is so it's <laughs> like I know but we're doing it. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so, yes. That was pretty cool. That was very cool. That was fun. So, Matt. Yeah. Yes. Was it a fitting wrap up for all you hold dear? I mean, no, it was not. Um, the problem with this is it's fan service to an embarrassing degree. Um, That's what I have right here. Fan service, the movie. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> to the point where even just like the little. And this is really what this is my problem with this thing. So Abram started with the Force Awakens. It was kind of fan servicey, but I enjoyed the Force Awakens. Mm -hmm. And Ryan Johnson comes along. He kind of blows the whole thing up, and he does his thing, which I had some problems with the Last Jedi, but ultimately I enjoyed it. Um, And I think it progresses the series. It does. It actually did. Yeah. Yeah. And but the issue, I think, the big mistake that Disney made is they didn't have one person working on the whole trilogy because. Abrams obviously comes back and says, yeah, this is not what I wanted to do, so we're not going to keep any of that stuff or very little of that stuff, and I'm going to go back to doing what I wanted to do, but I'm going to cram it all into one movie at the end. Well, that's the biggest problem with it, is you have the greatest, the most successful film franchise in history, basically, in the world. Mm -hmm. You come back and you've bought this license. You spent a billion dollars buying this property. You're going to do a bunch of films. You're going to start with the new trilogy, taking off after the last one. And you don't plan it out? Right, it's crazy. You don't have an arc and stuff set for w- films one, two, and three? You just Ryan Johnson said this in an interview. Right. They gave him part two, and they, there was no Bible. There was no book as to where our end point was. How do you, it's, it's malfeasance. I don't understand. <laughs> it's, wow. it's malfeasance. It's, I didn't think it was that bad. What are you doing? No, but just I to give a property all, really. like that. And then not plot plot it out just blows my mind. Snyder had everything planned for his super his DC films like right. that, for better or worse. Yeah, but yeah, you can't. Well, I mean, you <laughs> you can't there, roll the dice like this. Bad you can't have. You can't just kind of make this up as you go along. Right. I don't think. And it, the fact that Abrams just tosses aside most of Johnson's work, particularly what happens to Rose Tico in this film, right. is a travesty. Right. I don't they shuffle her off and they keep her in the background the entire time. They bring in what's his name? Dominic Mag- whatever it is from the Dominic. Lord of the Rings films. Oh um uh yeah, well also from Lost. Well that's why, because <laughs> yeah, Abrams yeah, yeah. loves his lost yes, people. Yes. Right, right, right. They could have given all those lines to Rose. Right. I don't know what the point of that was. And then so but that it, it's like somebody basically got a bunch of 13-year-old kids who are running a, a, a Reddit thread uh-huh. on what to do with the next wow. film and then gave them a bunch of mo- a money and said make this film. I didn't. The first third I of this film I think is a disaster. <laughs> I, yeah. I, it, it's 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 so fast and there's so many the editing it's just we go from pop to pop to pop and we just keep moving forward and we're just dis- and then just dissolving everything that Johnson had done. Now I if you don't like what Johnson did, I guess okay. But he was able to progress this series past. I mean, what the whole the biggest line in the whole series is is Kylo Ren saying you know, you have to kill the past, right? And he and Johnson sets this thing up, I think, for a viable future. But no, and the, but Abrams just slams the door shut. I get that you want to close the story on this trilogy, but I feel like now I what's I mean I, I get it. I I don't. I, I think that may be a bit of an overreaction to, to the whole thing. I mean, that's, I'm known that's for anything. Feeling. It's my hyperbole. But I, know, I hear you. There. <laughs> um, no, I, I didn't. I didn't feel that way about the about about that movie. I will give you. I will grant you. I was more excited to see what Ryan Johnson was going to do next with it, uh, if he was given an, another movie to to do. It's rare for the Star Wars movies to maintain a director. <laughs> period. George Lucas turns into Irving Kirshner, turns into Richard Marquand, turns into and then the and the exception are Lucas three of the worst again. movies. Yeah. <laughs> the <three> <laughs> Lucas, movies, yeah. Lucas, Lucas, Lucas comes back for those three. The franchise in cinema, the number yeah. one franchise in cinema, and no plan. Right, I, and I look at look at look at Disney's other property. It though. was a very loose plan to me. I mean, it's it's a no plan. Well, I don't know, but. but look at like Marvel, right? They yeah. had a plan. That Figi had a plan, and he stuck that thing. This, they went out and spent another billion dollars on this, and they said, "Okay, Abrams, here's your mystery." He makes a bunch of mystery box stuff, and then he walks away without telling anybody. He didn't know. What, he didn't know how any of that stuff was going to end. Like he didn't know. 
And like, was he really that divorced from it all? Was there like n- nothing for Ryan Johnson and not and I, firm to I come don't back think to? so. I don't think he knew. Does it? Unless, unless you know, like Chris said, I mean, I'll, I'll grant you, I could have used more Rose action. That that that. That's he's, she's one of the more I, interesting characters right. that we've gotten in the last six films. Right. Although you counting uh, the prequels, yeah. although you know, he does, and, and he does then kind of totally sidelines. Her. He does well. He does bring in and and again, she kind of got sidelined too. But because was, of what a subset of a subset of people on Twitter. Uh, like he even he well, even bashes know. the Holdo maneuver. He's that. like, you can't do that. That was like once a million kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. What? Is... <laughs> but I'm trying to look up the name of the. Uh, well, he also bring and he brings in another one of his. Uh, you know, he brings in Felicity there. Yeah, another Russell. almost pointless. Yeah, it doesn't even take her helmet off. And I'm with I'm with you on there. That was kind of inserted semi out of nowhere. But I did like I did like the scene where they're you know where where they reveal his uh, uh, pose pose past as a uh, spice runner. Mm-hmm. And and he's that was like, fun. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Oscar dialogue. Oscar, Oscar Isaac got a lot of fun dialogue. And then there's the they insert that lesbian kiss at the end, just right. for a little what nod to the SJWs like me. I guess so you want to <laughs> you want to you want to give me a punch to the gut. You make Poe and Finn give a smooch <laughs> at the end of the film. Well, didn't Oscar Isaac say, say like they were? He didn't think Disney had the courage to do that. He he kind of wanted to go that way. Although I don't know if John Boyega felt the same way. I don't know. I did, and it, so I just. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to think of it, this the perfect scene in, that encapsulates the entire feeling of this film is um, when Chewbacca gets his medal. He gets Han's medal from the first the the first one, and that's been yes. a fan rallying cry. Well, Why didn't Chewbacca get a damn medal I, that's, at the end of uh, that's the end of New Hope? Back into spoilers, you know there is the part the portion where where General Leia is laid to rest. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the bit of that drama that worked for me was, you know, when Chewie wailing. That like, is the that only was... emotional point in that movie that worked for me. At no, the only time that I actually got like, oh my, I actually, wow, that actually hit me. Yeah. The only thing that worked was Chewie's entire breakdown because everybody is gone. Yeah. They're all gone now. Yeah. And it's just him. Right. And it's just, and Lando. Right. And, and Lando in who this... is just shows up and then well, disappears. That, that was, also, that was also somewhat pretty unfortunate to the extent that they could have done more with him. They never really explain when he says, "My flying days are behind me," and then, and then suddenly, oh, here I am. Right. They also did it even even when they had uh, 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 Ray go ba- uh, when they had uh, Daisy Ridley go back to to uh, the planet where she trained with with uh, Luke. Mm-hmm. I don't think they really explained how she got there afterwards. There, it's like yeah. they just kind of jumped to it. So that was sloppy. It's it's a bit of a mess. Nowhere near the level of the Lucas sequels, Lucas prequels mess. Yeah, to, to my mind. I, I but, so do you do you hotter mess? Mm, it's not the best of this series. Yeah, it's a real disappointment. No. I'm, I'm gonna say the Last Jedi is the best of this of that of this series. of this last three. Yes. Yeah, I'd say that's true. I would, I would say that. that. I would agree with that. And that's not really. I mean, but it's still not really a shame because I feel like all three of them are probably, to my mind, better than. Return of the Jedi too, for that matter. I'm gonna say that. I wouldn't say this. I wouldn't is. say that. I, I would say, well, you, yeah. I was disappointed in this, and I, I, it's, it's a real bummer. But I didn't, I didn't, I don't have the loathing hatred of it that I do the the prequels. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> so really. and like at least at least it's watchable. I mean, it's a big disappointment to me, but at least it's watchable. Whereas the other ones are just barely watchable. Like your your whole body language right now is telling I me. I mean, we're there's still one thing I want to bring up that I'm very what active, active okay what activated about what's your what's well your I I, I think I want to say I think <laughs> the best character beef? in this series is probably because um, we are in the middle of Driver Fest Driver Fest yeah is uh, Adam Driver and his Kylo Ren character oh you're talking about the kiss at the end no well uh, I I'm hated not, that I'm not a fan <laughs> of that <laughs> no but it I didn't really bug me one way or the other to kiss by the way so the fact that. His turn is entirely too fast and entirely too complete. Just like with Anakin, even with an Anakin, I still don't know if Anakin deserved to be redeemed. Right. He killed now all of those children. Yeah, he did the, kill there, millions of people. <laughs> I'll go with you on that too. Kylo Ren was built up as a still bigger jerk than the Anakin of the prequels. There, forget uh, uh, not to put aside Darth Vader entirely either, who right. goes on to worse things. Even, but I mean, by the time the the prequels end, he's killed like. The younglings, and it's mm-hmm. you know, it's just like, and, and we've, but we see Kylo Ren. I think, and the way Adam Driver was playing him, and the way he was allowed to be played in this in in these movies has been kind of 
fun insofar as those characters are. He's awful, but you're watching him, and he has these like kind of breakdowns, which he which has is his so tantrums. yeah, these tantrums, yeah. and they play like tantrums. And he's such a jerk for having. He plays like a jerk with Jedi powers. This is basically what he is. And <laughs> but it's but it's fun to watch as opposed to nearly anything in the prequels, just by comparison. Mm. So yes, does he deserve to be re- uh, redeemed? Not really, but but the redemption there, the redemption arc was more kind of sorry, trying to give any kind of redemption beyond Luke to this generation of the Skywalker name before Ray takes it. That was the plan, I think. Clumsily ed- clumsily ex- executed, certainly in terms of there's not really a reason why she should land on the Skywalker name at the end. I don't know if she... Is is she expecting a Skywalker baby somehow? Was there some kind of like midichlorian pregnancy go- thing going on, like with <laughs> like with Anakin, Anakin's mother? Is is there going to be like another virgin birth situation going on here? I'm talking something? to a guy on Twitter about this right now, and he <laughs> mentions how how the film perfectly wraps up the whole thing. And um, eh. if you have some minor plot points, but overall, it it does exactly what it should do, and it does it well. And uh, one of the things he brings up is the Midichlorians, how Darth Sidious had um, impregnated um, uh, Anakin's mom. I'm like, is right. that canon? Because I don't think that's I been brought up in the movies. I don't and they specifically that, yeah. said that you don't look outside of anything right. except the films right. for stuff and for what's going on in yeah. this next group mm-hmm. of films. Yeah, But Driver still, so I think he's the best character and the most fun in this series. I Again, another Abrams thing that... The, we're going to bring back the helmet. Why? Well, we're going to put some cool red stitching lines on it so it'll look really cool now. Right. Even more badass. Well, actually, right. actually, actually, I will say that they did it for that reason, and then he puts it on. But that's another kind of thing that plays at, as funny Kylo Ren because it leads to that discussion in the, uh, but I like in the meeting him. room where he's like, no, it looks fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> I like him as the Kylo is. You have to kill the past. That's why he kills his dad. Right. He does hesitate in Last Jedi with taking out his mom. Yeah. He does, but I still, I don't, it was just too quick and too complete a well, turn. I mean, this this does keep up the fine Star Wars tradition of rushing to completion and kind of smash too much into the last yeah. film. Because, I mean, look yeah. at look at one of my big complaints of, of many, of Revenge of the Sith, is Darth Vader goes from, or Anakin goes from killing Mace Windu by accident and, like, crying about it, like, what have I done to, like, literally the next scene, cutting down a bunch of children. Um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's a big, uh, and it's nothing we haven't seen before. I was going to say another thing, too, speaking of repeating cycles, I mean, uh, of course, and a lot, and like we, like we said, J.J. Abrams does respect that particular arc of certain Star Wars films. It's like, got to be a planet-destroying weapon, got to be right. this, got to be that. And in the case of finishing the, a trilogy... Uh, he goes back to, I mean, it wasn't the original idea with Return of the Jedi, but for the special edition, they edited in those scenes when once the uh, victory happens on on the fourth moon of Endor, then you, you know they flash the to yeah, yeah a piece across the galaxy, and I think they even go to Cloud City and they go and yep. they're back on Endor and and J J Abrams doing that here. It's yeah, like he, he went is, to yeah. Cloud City, he went to it, it it's course, just on yeah. the Ewoks it's from the service. back there. It's fan service the movie, like we said. That's all it is. Finn is well, criminally underused in this thing. I think there's this whole thing where he's got to tell Ray something, but he never gets around. He never to saying tells her. It. Yeah, he never tells her. Abrams supposedly yeah. has said that it's basically that he's force sensitive. That was the whole thing he was trying to tell her. Not that he had feelings for her. Which is another thing, too, that would have bothered me if that was the case, because he has two suitors in these two films, right? Yeah. Uh, But he's still still going to go after Daisy. I mean, going after Ray, Mm -hmm. after all of that. Which, of course, then there's the whole subtext of out of of the two women of color that are are attracted in the he he needs to be after go after the white girl. But (laughs) there's a lot of weird kind of, I don't know. So I'm glad that that ended up not being the case. But there is just a lot of weird stuff. Like the Knights of Ren turn out to be a bunch nothing. of chumps. Yeah, nothing. They're built up. Now, Johnson doesn't do anything with him, I think, to uh, to his detriment. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But here they show up and they're just fodder. Yeah. And it just, it's, again, such a waste, something that's, I think, criminally underused. I'm trying, I, I'm trying to, there was the group introduced in this uh, in this one that on, on the planet where, on the, I guess it's another moon of Endor. Was it actually Endor proper where the Death Star wreckage Endor Prime. Oh, okay. is, yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, there was that tribe of uh, folks who I guess are were were like Finn. They were runaway uh, oh, stormtroopers, uh, storm right? Yep. And I'm trying to remember the Supposedly name. Supposedly, one of the theories is that that she's Lando's daughter. 
Um, yeah, I was almost wondering, like, and that's why I, I was had... dreading. I was dreading that mm-hmm. something. It was either he, she was going to come up related to somebody, like, "Oh, Finn, I'm your sister," kind of thing. I was like, "Please don't do it." Well, please don't do it. Okay, <laughs> the, the big old the big old spoiler we can also mention here too, since we're in Spoilerville. So Ray ends up being the granddaughter of, of Palpatine. Palpatine, yeah. right? Um, yeah. Which I guess out of nowhere, <laughs> it's. Half out of nowhere. It's really more like they they danced around it for two movies, because that was always the you question so? mark. Who t- they kind of did. They because I felt because no dancing whatsoever. I don't think we, we courted Palpatine as her lineage whatsoever. Well, well no, I, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that they laid the groundwork properly, but I'm saying that you know we're not unlike Luke, who you know after the first movie we get you know we get. Uh, uh, I mean, from the first movie, actually, he's told by Ben, oh, yes, you have this father, you know, and he gets the news like that. With Ray, we don't get any kind of back, you know, background with regards to why it's, there's some kind of uh, heritage or or destiny that she's uh, following on from, from her family line. that's the whole point. Yes. That's what Johnson is saying in that film. And I think why Luke's, Vader being Luke's father has such the sledgehammer impact it does you don't expect it and you don't see it coming. Right. right. And that's exactly why it works with Daisy with uh with, with Ray because she is nobody. Right. You know mm-hmm. that and she can make her own destiny. She is, you know, and I think that's why she was such an interesting character that out of all of these people she is not connected to the past. She is a brand new fresh thing for us to 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 watch this film or experience this series with and it turns out well no actually you know what we have to keep revolving everything around this one thing you know i i i hear what you're saying but i think really this goes back to my first point is that abrams laid the ground for for stuff that he wanted to do in the force awakens um johnson ignored all of it um he went his completely own direction and instead of instead of abrams picking up johnson's thread and being kind of forced to go with what he had Happened in the second movie. He tried to retcon everything to go back to the way he wanted it to be. Yeah, and that was a huge mistake. Yeah, because the whole thing ends up being overstuffed. Yeah, and it's it's just too much, and there's not enough emotional kind of depth or connection it's outside j- of that one scene for me with Chewie. Chris is so angry, and he's about just this. throwing so much stuff at you the whole time. You want to see this? How about this? I'll give you this. You want to see this? This oh, is what yeah. you want, right? Here's a little more of that. See, that's the, all this is. The 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 stuff that's made me angry. In the movie theaters, along along lines of fan service gone wrong or whatever, hasn't really come from this movie. We were talking on our own on my own show. There, you can put up the uh, you know whatever. Oh, I'm not <laughs> telling anybody who you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just some jerk. <laughs> but yeah, I, yeah, you know, I might as well put on clown makeup and go fight Robert De Niro in the streets. I have no idea. Oh, uh, but but no, uh, but the Joker, the Joker <laughs> movie. So that's that's the thing where I was looking at that and just like you know. I don't know what fans are connecting with and why, why that you know yeah. why that happened, and it's a and it's a head scratcher to me. With Star Wars, with with Episode Nine here, granted it could have used more structure, it but the whole the whole some people may say some. Um, now come on, I mean <laughs> compared to. I mean, oh, you don't like how we split just, up all the characters like we did in Empire, the greatest film in the series? You want everybody back together for one mission? All right, we'll do that too. Here you go. You know, some people don't even think Empire's. I, I saw a list where somebody listed Empire's the the worst one, which that's, was insane to that me. That person should be arrested. Yeah, that should be that's arrested. That's not right. Yeah, that's that not right not at all. Correct at all. And people, that's. I mean, Star Wars fans are weird people. Yes, they are. Actually, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, very weird. And it's going to get weirder yes, now with are. the. Uh, yeah, I mean, you guys have seen Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I saw the yeah. most recent one. Yeah. I have not seen Mandalorian, but you couldn't. You I don't couldn't, think it's great. You couldn't you don't swing think it's it. Great? It's okay. I think it's really good. It's a little repetitive and a little dull, I think. Mm. But it's it's Disney Star Wars, just like we got here. I think it just. I think this is where we are. now. I think Chris is in a bad this emotional where we are space now. right now. He's in a bad emotional space. Here's my last I think, note. I mean, I don't know if you guys have anything else to say mm-hmm. about this. My last note on this: I'm giving Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker a C. And my last note is, in the end, you know what? It's a kid's movie. And if you don't want to rise above that, that's all you ever want to be, then that's fine. As much as it kills me to say it, I'm going to give it a C plus. I think uh, I just have high hopes that they're going to do, the rumor is they're going to do a Knights of the Old Republic series, which I love. So hopefully it's good. Well, we're doing letter grades now, are we? Well, that's how we roll. That's how we roll around these parts. I know you do this. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Go so I'm that. gonna so I'm gonna give it over for uh, I'm gonna say more solid B plus or A minus I think. Wow. I I you know I I you, I would you think. like to pick one? 
Yeah, sure, B plus. All right. I'll be nice on, on this podcast. <laughs> you you can be your own person, Kevin. You're in our yard now, yeah. brother. You gotta play our rules. Chris, rules. Chris won't. Chris won't. I have to uh, be my own person now. Yeah, Chris won't <laughs> yell at you because you, you're you're the guest here. If oh, I had yeah. said that, he would have he would have he would have lost it. Probably would have. <laughs> but I'm a nice guy. <laughs> if you've had a chance to see Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker after this what half hour conversation, <laughs> just email at feedback at the first run dot com. We, did, we didn't even. We didn't. It was occurring to me too. We, we didn't even get to uh, to discuss the death teases of uh, C three PO and Chewbacca going All on right. through yeah. the movie. When they made it look like Chewie was going to die, I wanted to stand up and walk out of that theater. <laughs> I was, yeah that that would not have sat well with me at all. I was I was going to be a little upset about that too, but then, can't kill the dog, man. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Can't kill the dog man. <laughs> no, you, so, that's true. You can't Dave. kill the dog man either. <laughs> it's true. Our next segment will be mercifully short. We're going to tell you what's coming up on home video this upcoming Tuesday, December 31st. Michael's a normal boy in an abnormal position. He had a little accident. You had yourself some sort of extraordinary fright. Michael, where's your hair? I'm bald. The proper medical term is harem scarum. What a loony. Now... He's got one hairy problem. And he's about to find a solution. <laughs> you can't just come into our house, can you? Ghosts can go anywhere. In the least likely place you'd think. Here's old Charlie's recipe. A jar of peanut butter. Don't do too much of it or watch out. But the peanut butter solution is just the beginning. It's growing so fast. Of an even bigger problem. Mr. Jingus, it's moving. Human hair grows only half an inch a month. No more. That's a head of hair. Well done, son. I don't think it's natural, Dad. That's right. That's a clip from the peanut butter solution. If you were a child in the 80s, you were likely traumatized for life by repeated viewings of this on cable or VHS. If you've never seen it, Nothing can prepare you for the damage that awaits your psyche. This is all in the write-up of the movie. For our premiere release, Severin Kids... I can't believe Severin is releasing this. The notoriously strange and creepy Canadian kitty feature about burning winos, sudden baldness, psychotic teachers, suburban abductions, juvenile sweatshops, and the icky concoction that grows long, lustrous. It says it. <laughs> lustrous, thank you. Okay. I like to throw in eyes when they're not there. <laughs> Pubes is what it says. <laughs> keep it keep it lustrous, please. Matthew McKay and Michael Hogan, Battlestar Galactica, and Silic Sassus and Sese of the Grassy Heist star in the surreal mind roaster that moviejohn.com calls the real deal. It plays like an after school special that tells kids their hair will fall out. Peers will make fun of you, and it will, will be whisked away to a demented underworld where Celine Dion sings and children beg for their lives. Mm. Includes the extended U.S. theatrical re- release of it as well, a new audio commentary, and more. So that's it, the peanut butter solution. Your straight-to-DVD pick of the week. <laughs> it's New Year's. Nothing's coming out. <laughs> gotcha. Since it's yeah. the holiday season, and I have been I've been upset because of Star Wars. I can see that. I'm gonna, we're going to do a nice little kids one, all right? It's going to be a frozen New Year's Eve. It's a holiday to remember. It's the greatest event in the North Pole. You'd think it'd be Christmas. The New Year's dance party. And all the animals and friends in town are eager to show off their best moves on stage. Join Santa himself along with his main reindeer, Mittens. I don't think that's accurate. Oh, maybe it's Mittens in addition to his main reindeer. And all your favorites from around town, like Peeps the turkey, Violet the bunny, Lily the cow, Benny the bear, and Fritz the wisecracking ice cream monkey. It's a holiday to remember. It's a frozen New Year's Eve. Matt, what should we be streaming this week? Um, so a couple days from when we record this, the 20th, um, available on Netflix is The Witcher, um, the new series um, about kind of a dark fantasy series starring Henry Cavill. It's live right now. Mm. Yeah, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, you're correct. Um, uh, it's about a... Uh, Geralt of Rivia. He is a monster hunter in a kind of alternate universe Poland. Um, he's like this mutant killer kind of thing. And it's uh, it's a really cool dark fantasy. I caught the first couple episodes and he is a badass. It's, the fight scenes in it are fantastic. So the, the whole thing seemed, I don't know, I didn't look that interesting to me, but I keep hearing it's actually really good. Yeah, I mean, it's, mm. a, it's a big video game series. Um, and it's also based off of a... Um, 
you know, this Polish series of, of fantasy novels, which I've read a few of them. They're pretty good, but it's really the, it's the video game. It's a huge deal for a, a lot of people. Interesting. Yeah. The Witcher. The Witcher. Yeah. The Witcher. I know it was coming up in the queue. When With I was two Vs for the demo. Yeah. <laughs> and I was looking at some other Netflix things that we may talk about for a second here. Oh. Probably in a little bit. But before we keep rolling then, Matt, let's go ahead and do it. We've gotten Matt a Christmas gift. He's oh, gotten boy. a present from me. Aww. And we're going to open it up live during the podcast. Okay. Kevin didn't get anything. That's right. No. I didn't get Chris anything. I'm just some jerk we have this weird. We here. have this weird thing where... I'll just, uh, like, one of us will get the other a present, but the other one won't. Like, just kind of random. I'll send mm-hmm. something there, you know? I'll get stuff from him once in a while. Yeah. Sure. Well, that's, that's, how, how, you, that's yeah. how you keep the marriage going. That's, that's right. That's, that's right. How you, you keep you, the spark alive. You gotta, you keep, <laughs> it's, from, it's from Joseph A. Banks. Well. I'm hoping it's a tie. The box is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got here. Oh, boy. Crinkle, crinkle. Crinkle, crinkle. Crinkle, crinkle. Oh, wow. <laughs> really? Would you tell the fine folks at home what that is? These are um, a three pack of the Empire Strikes Back uh, cards. Um, look like they're vintage, right? Are these from like the eighties? This is an unopened rack pack of wow. Empire Strikes God. Back cards from nineteen eighty. Wow, that is a crazy. Wow. And I will leave it up to you if you want to open it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. There's three sticks of bubble gum in here though, That's so true. therefore I might I might need to crack these bad boys open. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Chris. I appreciate it. This wow. is fantastic. Wow. Thank you. I wonder. I hope that bubble gum isn't going to do something to the cards with it. I'm sure it already has. I'm sure by now. I'm yeah. sure by now. Thirty nine well, 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 year old bubble gum. Wow. <laughs> Chris, I, I I don't know what to say. There you go. Yeah. That's pretty impressive. I thought I wasn't short. I'm like, will he open it? Will he not? I could not. My Mrs. First Runner and I were discussing if you would open it or not. <laughs> we weren't sure. I don't know if I would. I'm, I don't think I'm going to. I don't know if I would. I'm Mrs. not going to. First there is a slight run. tear I noticed on the top of it, but you know um, it, 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 back, it looks in pretty good uh, shape, yeah. I think. You no, know, this is fantastic for being 40 years old. So, mm. kudos. Thank you, Chris. There I appreciate are. it. Merry Christmas. Happy yeah. holidays. Merry Christmas. Thanks. Whatever it is you do. Yeah. All right. Nobody else gets anything else. <laughs> let's go ahead and move on. Let's spend a few minutes and talk about. Let's keep the let's keep the love going. Okay. And let's spend a few minutes talking about marriage story. What? She's being represented by Nora. She's supposedly very fair. Uh, here's the fact, Jack. I charge nine hundred and fifty dollars an hour. Ted is four hundred. If you have a stupid question, you call Ted. To start, we'll need a twenty-five thousand dollar retainer. Oh, that's more than and I In all your financials, we need to do a forensic accounting. Which runs anywhere from ten to $20,000. But if we can all agree right away, it shouldn't get too bad, right? You were married here in L.A.? Y- yes, because her mom and sister are out here, and I'm not close with my your family. Your son was born out here. Yes, because, again, her mom and sister are out here, and I'm not... So you got married here, your kid was born here, and she served you here. Yeah, but we lived in New York. Why? Their problem? We're going to have to reshape the narrative. Currently streaming on Netflix, Marriage Story stars Adam Driver and Scarlett Johansson. Ms. Johansson has run into a little publicity challenges as of this late this past year. And here she turns. She's also, you may know her as your Black Widow in your Marvel movies, and she has her own film coming up early next oh, year. Oh, certainly does. Starring, if I think the actress of the year, I'm probably going to go with Florence Pugh. Mm. Stars in that mm. with her as well. Mm-hmm. But it's about a young couple. They have a young boy who are unfortunately going through a divorce. It is the latest film from Noah Baumbach. And I will tell you this. I really enjoyed this thing. Shocking. I felt it was very (laughs) heartfelt and authentic. It was heartbreaking and funny. I think Scarlett Johansson may have put on the best performance of her career in this thing. I really felt her. I really felt this whole thing. Baumbach really captures, I think what this experience must be like. Now, I thankfully have not been divorced, though. Me either. The There's still young. time. There's there still, still time. time. <laughs> <laughs> and it really gets into the kind of the conflicts and the kind of the, the dirty stuff that, you know, comes up in a divorce. And I think he handles it really well, especially of two people who I think clearly appear to still care for each other. Mm-hmm. They just know that they can no longer be together. And uh, as I said, Scar Joe's great. Adam Driver is fantastic in this as well. As we said, it's it's Adam Driver. It's Driver Fest 2019. Mm. And he never, I want to say he never seems to really take a side, though I 
think maybe he leans a little more in Driver's direction than he does Scarlett Johansson's? Well, well he, I think Adam Driver's a bit of a stand-in for Noah Baumbach himself because mm-hmm. he wrote yeah. this after he went through his divorce. Well, as as is proper, the, the whole movie to some extent also bears, it, it very much resembles like peak Woody Allen Mm. Uh, type stuff like you know before you know any considerations of other stuff about Woody Allen's life or whatever <laughs> but but think think you know Hannah and her sisters and and around that time you know the kind of stories you're getting out of Woody Allen and that and 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 equally funny surprisingly funny yeah in, it is very this, funny at times yeah. at many times you know with like a lot of those subtle bits of 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 humor between the characters there where you know like Julie Haggerty's uh, at, at Julie Haggerty playing that uh, Scarlett Johansson's mom is got this relationship going on with Adam Driver, you know, this friendship yeah, yeah. that now, you know, and, and it's, and suddenly there's concern about, you know, like it's kind of it, what's, ha- it's what happens during divorces. It's like who gets these friends or who gets that friend and friends. Mm. And now it's family too. And all this. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, Scarlett Johansson was great in this. Adam Driver's uh, uh, fantastic. Um, and, uh, and uh, yeah, basically all the cast, all the cast is, but, and Julie Haggerty also is, Nice to see her in there too. And uh, sorry, Al- Alan Alda too. But that's uh, among the groups of lawyers that uh, mm. Adam Driver has to meet with. Uh, and, and, and some great lawyers too. Laura Dern plays mm-hmm. Scar Joe's attorney, and then Ray Liotta pops up, yeah. looking yeah. His, uh, <laughs> yeah. his sharpest and sleaziest as he's looking quite a while. Yeah. So. yeah. And and uh, yeah, just a lot. Uh, they, they were razor sharp dialogue there. You know, mm. a lot of that stuff uh, going back, especially when it comes to lawyer talk and the speed that had to go at. Um, but, uh, you know, even this, even the setup of the theater scene in New York versus the whole LA thing. I, I like the, uh, the bit with the, uh, where she's filming the, uh, Scarlett Johansson is filming the scene in the pilot of the, uh, of the TV thing that she's working on there. Or was it filming a scene or just doing some kind of like publicity? I don't know what the heck she was doing. Where she's holding a, holding a fake baby. Yeah. And there's discussion about the baby. And then there's like, it's almost like she's giving away something to some of the crew that wasn't supposed to know this about the character right. or whatever. It's like, yeah. All kinds of neat little details in there that are just fun to play with. And, and they're talking about the, the grip. There's yeah. Like the the flirty grip. <laughs> the yes. flirty grip. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. It was, it's, it's, a surprisingly delightful movie, especially given like the emotional areas that it's uh, completely living in, mm-hmm. uh, which is a very uncomfortable time, uh, a, a marriage coming apart there, and uh, and you know and the reproachment, the reproach mount on both parts, and fancy, yeah, get all fancy on that one, um, yeah. Really, really quite enjoyed it. So, and I, and I don't know. Did you see the Meyerowitz uh, stories too, for that matter? The uh, previous Adam Dry, uh previous. Uh, Noah Baumbach? I have not. Uh, I do recommend that one, too. It's been a while since I watched it, but that was uh, Adam Sandler in that one with, uh, was it Ben Stiller, I want to say? No, I haven't seen it. Uh, anyway, well, yes, it's a, it's a ways back, but yes. Yeah, uh, it is Stiller. Uh, yep. Dustin Hoffman's in it as well. Dustin as Hoffman, well as, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, also very good. I think this is better, though, actually. It's, you know, kind of a... Uh, it's it's yeah you know, I don't know it's not even quite a chamber piece or whatever but there are, there's you know a lot more it's it's uh, got its stuff more well organized maybe I don't know but uh, yes the focus is better on just this relationship there and and the kid for that matter the kid was also pretty good too yeah he that. was pretty good yes so yeah okay Enjoy. all right Quite. Matt um yeah so I'll be the dissenting opinion oh no I'll Okay, so here's the thing. I, I I thought the film was very well done. I liked the film. I, I I hesitate to say I enjoyed watching it because like a film like Blue Valentine um, mm-hmm. or, you know, Kramer versus Kramer. The Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah. Kramer my, um, yes. But this was more fun than Kramer versus Well, yeah, Kramer this is definitely a little more lighthearted than Kramer versus yeah. Kramer. But the whole subject matter of like a relationship falling apart and kind of the messy emotional baggage that comes along with it. Um, I don't know if it, I don't know if it's because I'm dead inside or I've just become so, (laughs) so, uh, distanced from my human emotions at this point, but I enjoyed it. I appreciated it, but I don't think I'll ever watch it again. And like, I don't, that type of story just doesn't hold the same appeal to me as it used to. I don't know why that is. Um, I mean, it's. I think it's a personal thing. I, I guess um, if you're like me, uh, then maybe you won't enjoy this. But it's it's okay. Like I thought it was okay. Okay. Mm. Mm. I think the film just has an underlying sweetness and a a uh, 
a sense of what's the word I'm looking thinking of? I'm not sure. It just felt very, as I said earlier, very authentic and real to me, and you really connected with the characters and watching them kind of go through this as you say as you laugh as you cry as you experience all the emotions that they're going through i, mm. I found it to be a very touching and personal film that really worked for me mm. yeah well i mean you you're you got, you're the soft you got the the soft gooey i am i'm the one that listens to the uh am favorites the soft rock <laughs> <laughs> love on the rocks <laughs> ain't no surprise i'm giving uh, marriage story an a minus uh, give up on us, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna give it a B plus. Fair enough. Um, I think I'd give it an A plus. I'm gonna, Ooh. I'm gonna top on that one. Yeah. Wow. I don't think I've ever given out an A plus. Yes, ever? you have. Which would it? Uh, just a uh, drive. I assume. Uh, n- oh, well, it uh, wasn't drive. Let's let's. Okay, I'll back it down because I'm being wishy washy like that. We're gonna call it an A, but it's a straight All up right. A as opposed to plus or minus. I don't know if you've ever given one. You have called many films perfect films, though. That's true. I called Lady Bird a, Bird a perfect film. You didn't get an A plus, though. I did it not. No. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's fair. But yes, <laughs> I mean, it has to be like a A plus. Yeah, I don't know. I should probably come up with some criterion. For yeah, you really should. My grades are. Yeah, Raiders of the Lost Ark, perfect <laughs> film. Yes, A plus. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. That'll work. Yeah. All right. That's the that. benchmark. Have you seen A Marriage Story or Raiders of the Lost Ark? Just an email at feedback <laughs> at thefirstrun Do you have any A plus films? I'm sure you have in there somewhere. Let us know. I'm keen to find out. Chugging right along. Driver Fest continues right after this when Matt and I, because Kevin hasn't seen it, Matt and I discuss the report. Did you hear what Lindsey Graham said this morning about the agency breaking into our computers? The legislative branch should declare war on the CIA. Heads should roll. People should go to jail. Is that what you want? Send people to jail? We do have jails for a reason. The Justice Department investigated the CIA and they decided not to prosecute. It's their call, not ours. Now, when this administration took office, we faced the very real possibility of economic collapse. We had a decision to make. Do we spend our political capital on going around trying to find people to blame or do we solve the problem? Maybe the way to solve the problem is to hold people accountable. Do you ever wonder why history repeats itself? Well, I think maybe it's because we don't always listen the first time. Senator, the people at the agency, they have families. There are children who might lose a parent. Years ago, some radical group put a bomb in the flower box outside of my daughter's bedroom window right out here. Had it been any warmer out, it would have exploded. And then there was the time that I found Harvey Milk shot to death in his office. I, I think I'm aware of the risks of public service. Okay, so now we're on to the report, Matt. This is the, the movie about the <laughs> investigation, collection, and release of what is generally known as the torture report. Right. What the CIA did after 9-11, or as some people say, 911, which are weird people. Or nine one one, which makes it very confusing. Mm. And yeah, somebody was saying that on a podcast this week. Like we're repeating it nine one one as so weird. It's like it's the actual date. You can say September <laughs> or nine eleven. <laughs> Nobody calls it December two five. It's... Yeah, it's probably a flat earther or something. <laughs> quite honest, quite, quite probably. So <laughs> Adam Driver plays our lead, and he is looking into this. Uh, Annette Benning plays Diane Feinstein. Yeah, quite well as well. And there's actually John Hamm shows up in this thing. If, if I anybody must be happy with the casting of their character, yeah, it's Ken. Uh, what was his name? And uh, he gets to be played by John Hamm, which is I'm telling you, though it may be horrible for your wife, Dennis McDonough. Like, Dennis McDonough, thank yeah. you. So, a pretty strong cast. A film, Matt, though that felt to me kind of like a high end TV production. And right. like prestige television, like right. this was like an HBO joint, as they say. <laughs> mm. And maybe the script was a little cliched at times. A little? But overall, I found the thing kind of to be riveting. Mm. I think it pro- provides a lot of information in a short period, which maybe some people could look at as a negative. Yeah. Uh, but I still felt it kept a strong sense of drama and suspense for me. Yeah. And I think Driver turns in a great performance here as well, as he, he's the investigator tasked to look into all of this. I think truly facing kind of impossible only because dealing with the CIA 
with the wrongdoings of a previous administration, but in the middle of administration, who wants to turn the page and move on? And I don't. I really, I rather enjoyed this thing. What did you think of the report? Um, well, as the more political of the two, which is you, I knew you were going to like it a lot more than I did. I was on board with the things for probably the first um, half, maybe half third. I was really good. Um, but there comes a point in this thing where this is a report that's like 10,000 pages long or something like that. Mm -hmm. And there are just basically scenes that are interminable scenes where Adam driver is just yelling about what's in the report, just listing off names. And it wasn't very riveting to me. It just kind of, after a while, I just kind of glossed over what they were doing. I mean, they would do a cut of, you know, some guy talking and then it would be, you know, Adam Driver apocalyptic and why you should be my, be mad about what that guy's talking. It wasn't very, it wasn't very engaging. It was like reading the report almost in and of itself, which I don't know. That's if That's fascinating to me. Yeah. I don't, I didn't get that at all. I get maybe, uh, do you think it's my political leanings that made me be more interested in this thing? I, I if I'm being honest, yes, I think so. I mean, mm. to an extent, I mean, I think not that I wasn't outraged or anything by it, but I, I'm sure you followed it a lot closer than yeah, I there did. Was, there was nothing really in here that I didn't know. Yeah, yeah. so, um, I mean, I knew the broad strokes of it, but I didn't know a lot of the details. But I think as far as making a compelling narrative, it wasn't. It failed on some, on some level. I find that disappointing to hear. But you're not arguing with me. No, I am. I think that's. I don't think that's. I don't think that's accurate. Just like I said. Well, I said it's a little maybe cliche script wise, but I like I said, I was riveted through the whole thing. I thought it was. I thought Driver appropriately expressed the moral outrage that anybody who is looking into all this stuff finds out. Finds. I'm not. I'm not saying that his his expression of moral outrage isn't appropriate. What I am saying is that him just yelling about like exposition just like yelling exposition or like kind of laying out the dots for you doesn't necessarily make for compelling viewing well i think so that maybe that is then is since i knew what was happening mm. i knew it was coming that it was then maybe he's like a cipher for me yeah saying, like, maybe this is wrong. This is, you're like i am adam driver in this situation yeah but it's like if, it's like if you went to a play and mm -hmm. it's a one man and it turns it's like supposed to be this ensemble thing and then halfway through it just one character just gets up in the middle of the play and on the stage and just starts yelling at the audience for the rest of the, the rest of the film about why they should be upset about what it just happened. That's I guess so. I hmm. that bothers me. Well, most things do. I know they do. This has been an episode <laughs> of things bothering me. Yeah, I mean, like I said, we're in the same. We're Chris and I are sharing the same physical space right now. We're in the same room, which doesn't happen very often. And I'm sitting here watching him, and his arms are crossed, and he's like all closed off, like his old, well, his that, old you body see language. Me, I was bouncing during the Rise of Skywalker discussion. <laughs> yeah, he was waiting for my next opportunity to talk and to drag this film, that <laughs> film more. The report I found to be an effective political thriller, and I enjoyed it a lot, and I think it's well worth your time. Now, I don't know if it's theatrical worthy. Yeah, I think this is more of a a, a film you pop on and watch on a Sunday night, you know, and kind of just kind of get sucked into and enjoy. But it is a glorified uh, kind of TV movie. But for the most part, it worked for me. Mm -hmm. I, I gave the report a B. Um, yeah, I think it's good for what it is. I don't think it's necessarily for everybody. Obviously, um, your mileage may vary on this thing. But if it's your cup of tea or even if you think it might be your cup of tea, I think you should check it out. Um, worlds apart, as usual, I gave it a B minus. <laughs> <laughs> And I didn't see it. So Kevin will go out and watch the report at some point, and he will let us know, and we will sure. tell you what he said. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I think that very well could happen. Yeah. So if you've seen the report, and that's, I love how we have what it sounds like very different <laughs> yeah, views. I know, right? And then B and B minus. The, yeah, I mean, well, the problem is what I've learned in doing this show for almost a decade, Chris, is it's really come down to a matter of degrees with us, you yes. know? So I got to make it. Uh, <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> and so we got a sucker punch like once every couple of years, you know? <laughs> so you've seen the report, shoot us an email, feedback at the first run dot com. All right, let's wrap up this behemoth of a show. The behemoth. And then we're going to try and share our five favorite minor Love that I was stuck with non primary <laughs> for like three months. <laughs> it didn't occur to me to use the term minor Star Wars characters. Right. I was going to make things much more convoluted than they need to be by using the wor words like convoluted. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Bounty hunters. We don't need that scum. Yes, sir. 
Those rebels won't escape us. Sir, we have a priority signal from the Star Destroyer Avenger. Right. There will be a substantial reward for the one who finds the Millennium Falcon. You are free to use any methods necessary, but I want them alive. No disintegrations. As you wish. So here's what we're going back and forth on all day. Is General Grievous a minor character, a non-primary character in the Star Wars universe? See, if you say non-primary, I would say that that's true. He's not. But I wouldn't say he's a minor character. Well, see, now, so maybe I was right to use the term non-primary. Because I... I was just scrambling to replace a guy that I'm, when you say minor, I have to take him off. But when you say non-primary, I get to put him back on. What the what? <laughs> All right, then, because that blows up my list. So I'm sticking with non-primary then. I'm sticking with non-primary too. Fine. So yeah, all this mm. stuff that I made. See, I'm not being overly complicated. I'm doing the right thing. Well, no, this is for just me. basically what you put out there for months. So that's what I'm prepared for. <laughs> that works too. Yeah. Kevin, feel free to jump in if you do have like a five, or do you want to just? Pop I don't know if off I got a, a five. Ago. I can. I mean, you know, like I will. T- I will say that because uh, I've been doing improv comedy with folks lately over at CT Comedy Theater in uh, downtown Hartford, Connecticut. There, I better see some coin for this. S e a t e a Comedy Theater. Uh, but we did. Uh, we have this thing called Nerd Ensemble. Uh, which is kind of a looser group of improv people, and uh, we did uh, improvise Star Wars. Uh, oh, and been fun. and oh, yeah, yeah, fun. yeah, and you know, and, and so you, it was basically a lot, of, a lot of short form games. We were busting out, busting out characters, and uh, from the audience, you know, because we get suggestions, we prompt fans to show up. So you know, they'll, they'll throw out stuff from the audience, and I had to kind of help school somebody without trying to tell them how to do it because uh, somebody had mentioned from the audience, Salacious Crumb. You know, the person was trying to say, oh, yeah, he's from Return of the Jedi. And then I finally said, the guy with the big ears. Like, <laughs> like that. <laughs> right. Jabba's Palace. And, Jeez, and somebody... slow down, Kevin. I can only masturbate so much. <laughs> <laughs> if you slow down, you won't. Never. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> just the one time. But uh, so Salacious Crumb comes to mind on on that whole thing. I might also mention, uh, you know, actually, I was saying... Um, OG Jabba the Hutt mm-hmm. when he was a human. Yeah. Oh, there you <laughs> go. When he was a human. Ah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Not even, uh, yeah, pre digital to be sure. Okay. But dude in the fur coat. Oh, yeah. Because the yeah, scene. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That they even drew in the old Marvel comics. <laughs> it was there in the Marvel comics. They, they right. you know, before it ever showed up, and, you know, because then Lucas would deny that it ever existed. And, oh, yeah, Jabba was always going to be a slug, and it was always going to be nine movies. Oh, wait, no, it was always going to be six movies. Yeah, whatever, George. Fine. Right. But, uh, but yeah, they definitely drew the hell out of, like, fur coated Jabba, Jabba Hutt dude yeah. in the Howard Shaken illustrated Marvel comics, mind you. Hi. Nice. <laughs> so, so there's my deep cut. Thank you. <laughs> my is my Boba Fett honorary list. Because I feel like the layup number one answer is Boba Fett. Okay. So, my number five, Matt, I'll give you the ultimate number one. Because it's the holiday season and I'm feeling like sharing. Wow. I'm feeling giving. Two gifts? I know. Wow. What a treat. I know. My n- number five is just, I had to do it because it's whenever I see him on screen, I giggle. And it makes me laugh. And I feel good. And that is the MSE6. The mouse droid. Oh, okay. Uh, that shows up on oh, the yeah. Star Destroyers, the Death Star, whatever. Sure. But the little guy runs up, something happens, he gets spooked, and he goes in reverse and goes in the other direction. Mm-hmm. The little shoebox looking droid. Yes. I just, I know I'm in for a treat whenever that little sucker shows up. <laughs> so I actually gave him, I think, an little honorary mention ish type of thing, but make it in my number five. There you so go. the mouse, six. That little mouse droid. Can I, can I mention another one? I forget if, he, if this character ever got a proper name or designation. It was a droid. And it was an Empire Strikes Back, and it's the one uh, that looks like kind of a silvery twin of C-3PO who oh, he right. runs into and swears at him. It's yeah. like Ichuta. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, how rude. <laughs> I'm sure he did. I'm sure he's got a name. There's a Wikipedia out- entry out there for some. I'm sure there is. Somewhere. There was a Kenner probably action figure for that. I mm-hmm. did. Mm. Better have been, and it better be cussing up a storm in yeah, that I'm basic sure, yeah. language. <laughs> <laughs> how disappointed would you, too? Because I know part of that... Uh, in the trailer, when C-3PO had the red eyes, right. he thought he was going to be a, what an investigate, no, what an interrogator droid. So there's there's a rumor that there's going to be a Doctor Afra uh, TV show, and 
who that is. She's in the Darth Vader comic by Marvel um, that came out like maybe five, ten years ago, and which is great. And she has a, an evil C-3PO as one of her companions who's named Triple Zero. He's an interrogator droid. So he acts like C-3PO, but he's a torture bot. And it's he is fantastic. He is so much fun to watch. Um, I was really hoping it would be something like that, but it was sadly disappointed. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Ac- That's the actually, tagline for Rise of Skywalker on that Blu-ray box. <laughs> I thought it would be something sadly, fun to watch, but sadly disappointed. <laughs> I guess uh, I didn't. I didn't pick up on the reference there. Uh, there, but it sort of sure. It seemed like they might have been heading in that direction by suggesting that uh, he was. They had to shut him down because of the Sith language. Thing, oh yeah, yeah. Which was which was a actually that was kind of an interesting little thing to throw in there, you know. But uh, one little thing that comes out of nowhere, just more of it. I thought it was interesting. It just. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Nowhere. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Matt, we'll get around to it finally. Your number five. <laughs> um, my number five is uh, IG-88, the droid. Number five. Number five, yeah. Didn't really do a whole lot, but he looked really cool and like an actual droid. But then when I got to see IG-11 in The Mandalorian um, shoot it up, that was pretty sweet. So it kind of fulfilled some stuff for me, you know, getting yeah. to watch that. So my number five. I was disappointed that it wasn't IG-88 in The no. Mandalorian. But considering what happens to him, I'm happy it wasn't. <laughs> so my number four then is Count Dooku. Okay. Anytime I get some Christopher Lee on my TV set or on the big screen, I'm pretty happy. Yeah. And uh, I just like just he just brings an air to everything that he's in, you know. That I've always enjoyed watching Christopher Lee, and he kind of gets done a little dirty, I think, much like my girl Rose Tico does in Rise of the Skywalkers or whatever it's called. Uh, but. Yeah, no, I just like Christopher Lee. He's got the uh, cool lightsabers. He's got the cape, and he's doing a bunch of cool jumps and twists and turns and fight scenes. That Jerry, I mean, how old is Lee in this? Like in the early, like eighty? Uh, late? N- no, maybe late sixties, early seventies. Uh, back, yeah, I guess back then it would have been late, probably early seventies. All right, yeah, but still, you can't go wrong, with Christopher Lee, in anything you put him in. Well, I might be wrong now, <laughs> but still, Count Dooku is uh, my number four. All right. So my number four is um, from Rogue One, director Krennic. I'm a big fan of Ben Mendelsohn. Um, He always uh, Mm. brings a lot of uh, gravitas. And he looks pretty damn cool in that white uniform. Um, But uh, the cape. And and the case, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Like director Krennic? That's a strong strong pick right there. Yeah. I totally forgot about him, and I'm very disappointed in myself. I'm disappointed in you. That probably would be on my list. Maybe Mousepot's got to go. Okay. So yeah, actually, Mousepot definitely has to go. <laughs> <laughs> He'll just run away scared. <laughs> That's right. All right, so maybe it's Krennic then. All right, so my number three then is the aforementioned IG-88. Okay. One of my favorite bounty hunters from back in the day. Just a weird, cool design. And once you see what he can actually do in the Mandalorian, or at least that species, that mm-hmm. model, I'm not sure what you would call it. But the IG-88 kicked all kind of butt, and I've always been a big fan of it. So uh, it's one of the action figures I had, of course. I had a bunch of them. But yeah. that one always stuck out in my mind. I don't know, aesthetically, the design of it, I always thought it was really cool. So, so it looks like an actual robot, you know? Yeah, so that's my three. All right, so my number three is um, the only competent Imperial officer that we see in the entire original trilogy is Admiral Piet. Started off as Captain Piet. Became Admiral Piet when his superior was choked out by Darth Vader for incompetence. But... He was good enough to be at his job. He managed to come back around. He was still around in Return of the Jedi. And he's the one who gets killed when the ship flies through the bridge um, at the Battle of Endor. So I don't know why, but I always wanted to know more about the exploits of Admiral Piet. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. I don't remember. I'm blanking. On, I feel like I can see his face, but mm. I can't really remember. So my number two, then, is one of my favorite characters to play in Star Wars um, Battle... Front. Battlefront, thank you. I was mm-hmm. going to say ground and then force. I knew both of those weren't right. <laughs> it's late, folks. It's like 11 o'clock at night here, right? Not it's 10.30. 30. It's not even 10.30. I'm, Come on. I'm old. <laughs> Come on. So my number three, then, is the Grenadier. This the, is your number two, by the way. My number two, thank you. See, I told you I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the way he shoots the grenades there, he drops the poison gas, and then it is Bosk. Mm. One of my all-time favorite bounty hunters. The reptile-looking guy. Imagine, do you remember the, the, the big lizard guy that Kirk fights in Star Trek would make him yellow? Gorn? Yeah, there you go. And yeah. there you go. That's uh, Bosk. He's got the he's got the crawl. He's got the what? The uh, the, the tattoo. The tattoos. What the hell is wrong with me? The scales? The scales, but no, his toenails on oh, his yeah. exposed feet on yeah, the yeah. on the floor as as Lucas or Kirshner, I should say, pans up to see all the bounty yep. hunters and yep. stuff. 
Uh, you swear you see IG-88, you yeah. see Bosk, you see Boba, all that stuff. So, But uh, character designs in the Star Wars universe, Bosk was always one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, all right, so my number two is the bad mf -er himself, uh, Mace Windu. Gets his own purple lightsaber. Only one out there that's not uh, red, blue, or green. And his lightsaber even had etched on there on, the, on his prop, bad mf -er, um on the actual did library. Really? So, yeah, they did. The prop department etched it on his lightsaber. That's lovely. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I thought uh, Samuel L. was uh, a jerk, but a, a, good, a, you know, a perfectly good jerk uh, Jedi. So there you go. Nice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my number one then is the one I had a question about. And that's General Grievous. Oh, okay. I love the idea. It's kind of pseudo Vader esque, right? Where he's got yeah. the suit that keeps him alive. Yeah. He's some weird, twisted, deformed, alien, ugly, just monstrous creature underneath. Mm -hmm. And what he does, he, he uh, you know, his business is killing Jedi's, and business is good. <laughs> and he keeps their lightsabers, and then he. He's got all these different other arms, and he's able to wield them all at the same time. And mm. just another genius bit, I think, of uh, creature design mm. from Lucas Arts or Lucas Films. I think he's able to capture kind of, in some ways, the essence of Vader in regards to the creature design of it. But still, just an all-around cool character, really great, unique voice, and just a fun thing to see on the screen. I just, I love the hell out of Grievous. Probably my favorite thing to come out of the uh, prequel trilogy. I really hate him in Battlefront, by the way. If you oh, yeah. play General Grievous in Battlefront, you're a terrible person. Don't ever do it again. Um, <laughs> my number one is, besides Luke Skywalker, actually maybe the most competent pilot that the Rebellion has is Wedge Antilles. He's, he's um, in basically every battle, every space battle. And he even shows up in this last one as well, um, for mm -hmm. better or worse, as more fan service. Um, mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and he uh, had a... If you're more interested in his exploits, uh, you can read the Dark Horse comics about Rogue Squadron. Big, tons and tons of them that you can check out. Mm. Nice. So do you have any honorable mentions? Nope. What? what? No? Mm. Uh, I've forgotten Krennic, so I popped them on. Actually, I made them my five, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Uh, my boy Porkins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which is just horrible by Lucas to, to name the guy Porkins. The, the heavy, guy was The one Por heavy set guy. <laughs> his name Porkins. Was a, 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 I had missed Wedge during a during a battle in there. Or was he? The... Uh, he is he's manning the the dorsal gun on the Falcon. So oh, he's okay. he, there's a guy that's in a right. It's in a flight suit with right. white hair, and he goes, that "Let's guy. go, Lando." And that's, that's him. It. Why he's not flying, I don't know. Because there was that other guy who was kind of like a big, you know, a big guy there who was like who was uh, flying one of the X wings. And I forget what character. I don't know what character name he had or what he had yeah, a I mustache. Don't he had kind of. Okay, yeah, and uh, kind of a demeanor that, or maybe a general shape that was not unlike. And I, and I was sitting there thinking, like, are they going to give him a, like a name along the lines of Porkins, just to kind of like point <laughs> out how, how, ter <laughs> how terrible Porkins a name Porkins is for that, you know? Porkins er, uh, Por <laughs> uh, Kira from Solo. Okay, yeah, uh, yeah, is an interesting character. Admiral Holdo, mm -hmm. I like Laura Dern in that film. Nine Numb. Mm -hmm. is a great one as well. I had oh, yeah. Rito, I had Paige, Tico, and Rose, I guess, now is a minor character. Yep. Or a... She's, been, she's been fridged. Been fridged. Mamau Nadan, or you may better know him as Hammerhead. Oh, okay. Mm. Your boy Wedge. And then let's give some love to Malkili, who was the Rancor Master. Oh, yes! And Return the guy who yeah. starts blubbering at the end, yeah. And Fantastic. then um, finally, I have two more. The Nope Troopers, as uh, I call them. Yeah. They, they, they walk away after Ren has one of his tantrums. Yep. Oh, okay, gotcha. And then yeah. uh, <laughs> Daniel Craig as a Stormtrooper right. and yes. Force Awakens yes. as well. Yes. I was going to say Nine Numb, also fortunate enough to appear in the Venture Brothers uh, universe. Oh, was he? Yeah. There was, well, the, that was the end of season two, I want to say. The Mar the Wedding of the Marnock there, and they have that side adventure with uh, the Order of the Triad there, and they steal the Venture plane, and he's co-flying it along with uh, Jefferson Twilight. You remember this? They, they conjured him mm -hmm. from a they conjured him from a trading card. Oh, okay. Because <laughs> they were doing kind right of here. like magic things, <laughs> messing around and whatnot, and so they conjured him from a trading card. And uh, and uh, I think the alchemist is one saying like, uh, "Should we kill that thing?" Or <laughs> <laughs> he's probably my favorite character in the original, not the original, but the the Star Wars Battlefront. Because oh, okay. he's like a weapons guy. Okay. He's got all sorts of cool stuff all right. um, when you used him. So in the, in the first Star, that first Star Wars Battlefront that came out about six years ago or so. Yeah, he was an awesome one. All yeah. right. So what's, what's your favorite non-primary Star Wars character? <laughs> Shoot us an email at feedback at the first run. 
Next week, well, it's going to be Uncut Gems. We thought we were doing 1917 as well, but I guess it's more of a limited release, not getting a wide release till January 10th, mm. which pushes our top 10 of 2019 out even, even further. further. So that'll be fun. We'll, we'll do it after you guys, to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It'll be in May. <laughs> so oh, our yeah. second film is TBD, though I'm sure whatever it is, it'll be an awesome, rollicking good time. In the meantime, mm. we hope you all had a great holiday. Thank you for joining us this year. It has been, I think, a very strong year and lots of great stuff to ha- ready to happen in 2020. So look forward to that. We've got a bunch of top tens, lots of decade wrap-up stuff coming up. It's going to be a crazy time at TFR here, especially once Matt gets settled. He's got his own life changes coming up, so mm. moving residences. Mm-hmm. So that's always a unique challenge. In the meantime, check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Do a search for the first run. Scroll, scroll, scroll eventually. You will find us. Go over to Apple Podcasts and give us a review to help other people find the show. Don't forget to check out the Culture Dogs. Kevin, why don't you do yourself some a few more plugs? You can stream us uh, uh, live on Sunday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time at uh, www.uh.org. We're also on the stream archive where you can listen to the last couple of weeks' worth of episodes of those right there. Uh, I'm on Facebook at facebook.com slash culture dogs. Uh, and I'm on Instagram at culture dogs. Uh, and, uh, don't, however, uh, I don't know what happened to it for a second there on Instagram. There was, there were these guys who had a, who had an Instagram feed, uh, calling themselves cultured OGs. So, um, <laughs> that's not you, not, that's not us. We're not, we don't have like uh low rider cars or whatever. And that right. thing. No, you can not. also check out Kevin on only fans. Um, you have to, uh, <laughs> pay him 10 bucks just to <laughs> access it though. And then go from there. Uh, I didn't need the money. <laughs> so that's true. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and then take an extended break, and we will see you all soon.